Well, welcome back. Um, this is a slightly different project in as much as uh, one I'm going to be making it up as I go along, but it has three completely different tasks. Um, the first thing is I'm very keen to have a go at designing my own um, res style flying wing. And I happen to be messaging Andy at Angel Wing Designs about a particular wing which was this chap here so this is called the wind freak and it was designed by a chap called uh, roger sanders in california got a pretty cool tash so i think if it, if i end up making one after just well i have to dye it but um anyway it was apparently it was based on ken bates's uh, wing also wind lord uh, the unique thing is, is it's actually controlled by rudder and elevator so the what you see here is not elevons it's just rudder elevator um, so that interested me because I've never flown a flying wing that's just rudder elevator but I didn't want to go the whole hog and go for something that potentially might not work uh, so Andy uh, bless him has come up with a little um, put together kit. Now, the reason for this small experimental kit, which I'm just about to show you, is for another reason uh, for doing this project, is actually, um, I'm very interested in the Klein Fogelman type wing sections. And what I wanted to do was to come up with an idea where I could, um, basically snap on snap off to see what the differences were and we suddenly thought well hang on this would make the perfect platform to do all three so I could have an experiment making a flying wing res glider I can have a go at flying it rudder an elevator and also um, I can have a go at dropping different wing sections into Klein Fogelman so not going to go into Klein Fogelman too much at the moment. I'm just going to talk you through the basics of this kit and then we'll go from there. Right, let's show you what turned up and I'll, I'll talk you through the thought process. This is the main wing. And if I pop that out of there like so and just show you this material. So it's, it's, like, a, it's like a Depron foam in the middle. And it's got this it's like a very very thin plastic covering on the outside so that's going to be the main wing and the idea is is that i've got two outer panels so there's just one the idea i'm going to come up with a dihedral i'm going to put that on there like so uh sorry that's going to go like that and then we've got one the other side as well so that's the wing um, and it's say it's we're going to do a basic wing and then I'm going to add Klein Fogelman in various different guises um, I think it's KFM two three four just to see the difference in performance so that's main wing this is going to be the elevator and then this is the fuselage and all I've got, say, there's no plans or instructions. This is just something that's come off the, t more, basically more off of Andy's head than it has mine. So this is the um, fuselages. And what I intend to do is I'm going to put them on the outside, not the ply in the middle. My logic behind that is, is it means that I can then cut away on the inside to make a nice space for the battery. And I've got an idea where I want the servos to go. So that's basically what I'm going to do with that. And then we've also got uh, this rudder elevate, sorry, rudder, which is going to be popping on there like so. So I am just going to do some experimenting with some different glues. I have done a little bit already, and to be honest with you, for sheer speed and convenience at the moment um, hot glue guns working out um, so I might clamp these together and use a different glue but definitely for the wings at the moment I am looking at using hot right, glue so we are about to build the wing and I think it's important we talk about Klein Fogelman um, I'm no expert I've dabbled a long long time ago in the past Klein Fogelman what the hell is he talking about these 
if you go on the internet there's absolutely loads of uh, different structures very popular with people who do sort of electric flying type planes uh, sort of you know park flyers that type of thing because they're normally built in um, foam board and the nice thing is is with the foam board that you get to double it up and it's great on strength now <clears throat> looking at these um, it says here so the original one was the KFM one <coughs> oh, excuse me uh, it says a good utility aerofoil but somewhat superseded by the KFM2 so um, KFM2 which is this one it says it's um, seven to nine percent thickness so the idea is is I think it's whatever the total width of the cord is you make that the percentage of the cord and the step is at 50 percent so this is at 50 percent so so the step is at 50 percent now it's got the cord there at seven to nine percent of the thickness and i think you work out the the thickness um by measuring the actual cord length and then working out what seven to nine percent is but being as we're using this type of material I mean, to be absolutely um, experienced, you'd, you'd have to either sand it down or build it up to an exact shape. And my experience is looking on the internet, most people appear to just slap another one of the same colour, or same colour, the same thickness, and then carry on from there. But I am going to be quite um, specific about the step at the cord. So the one I've looked at is the KFM2, which looks quite good. Now that then leads me very nicely onto so what i basically want to do is i want to fly it as a flat wing i want to convert the wing to kfm2 and then i want to go to kfm4 which is this one and the reason i want to go to kfm4 is let me read this for you because the um the step is the same the thickness is the same easy build fast and maneuverable slightly sharper stall than other kfm aerofoils great choice for aerobatic planes works very well on flying wings and makes them easier to fly slowly so that's the plan is i'm going to make the basic wing and then i'm going to cut the steps or make the steps i'm a little bit tight on material so i have andy has very kindly sent me i've got this sheet and uh, i've got some spare sheets uh, of stuff i think i've got enough and uh, a little bit of previous experimenting. So I think I've got enough for us to do those, basically those three shapes. So that when we get to the uh, slope, we can have a go. Um, and then we need to think about how we're going to be able to actually add them, take them off um, very quickly at will. But I have an idea.
so let me just show you so that's going to be i'm just going to need to do a bit more work on the leading edges but that's a klein fogelman four and basically uh you take that off sorry you take that off from the bottom and that makes it a klein fogelman two so there's that and then i've done the tips exactly the same so they're rough and ready at most so i've got to get their dihedral in so anyway klein, klein fogelman four on both tips and what I've done is just to remind myself I've written right top, right bottom, so I didn't get confused. So, uh, Klein Fogelman 2, Klein Fogelman 4. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to join the three wing panels together, not these, because these are going to get cleaned up and put by because I've got to still think of a way. If you can think of a way of quickly adding these to the wing on and off without damaging the undersurface, just write in the comments for me. So they're all my bits, and I better put these away so I don't end up using them again. In fact, um, I'm actually going to put them behind there so I don't I forget them. So next thing we're going to do, I'm going to think of what is going to be a decent sort of bit of dihedral for this. That's looking about right. So I'm going to do the dihedral and then we can start, when that's done, then we can start looking at angling the uh, blanks to make it the different variations. And then we just got to talk about how we're going to add the elevator with the fuselage. But that's the next step. Well, bit of an update. Um, two things. I had a camera failure, so I missed out a bit of me sorting out the wings, which I'm just about to explain. And also had a right mare because I was trying to use a glue gun and just couldn't get it to go. Literally couldn't get the glue to stick any. And then I realised that the glue gun I got was one of these low temperature glue guns that was actually my wife's. <laughs> so anyway, sorted. Let me tell you what's been happening. Right, so I joined the wings without the spars and literally it was rubbish. I don't know what I was even thinking. Anyway, I've put a, um, it's a sort of, it's not, it, it is a hardwood spar. I've also added the elevator and I've put myself a torque rod across there uh, and hinged. So that's the wings. I've added some dihedral. Don't know. I just uh, thought that looked about right. Um, if you'd like to make any comments about the dihedral, make a comment down the bottom. But I've... Uh, done that and I've done it whether it's right or not I've used a hot glue gun because um, I envisage doing plenty of experiments with this so um, I don't want anything too permanent so wings virtually done but we're going to need to have a little bit of chat later on about whether I need reflex in this part of the wing because obviously I'm going to get be able to control the reflex of this but how much reflex and whether I need to put something that gives me some adjustable reflex as part of the experiment. Uh, the other thing is uh, I've glued all the fuselage together. Uh, I've got the space for the battery and now what I'm just working out is whether I'm going to use uh, elastic bands or whether I'm just going to use some uh, wing bolts. But um, I'll get back to you. Okay, so the next thing we've got to look at is wing joining uh, and a couple of different methods I looked at. I thought about doing wing bolts, but I've got to be honest with you that um, when I looked at it and thought, yeah, if you've got a wing bolt through that, that's going to rip through there really, really quickly. And uh, as this is going to be experimental, I imagine there's going to be some unplanned arrivals. So I'm going to add... A small bit of ply here which is going to drop in there like so and then I'm going to pop a little bit on the back here and have bands um, to keep the wings on because I think that's going to be the best thing we want a little bit little, when we're experimenting we need a lot of bit of little bit of mobility okay little update on the fuselage and positioning of the servos Given that this is going to be a straight flying wing, I'm assuming that the CAG is going to be fairly well forward. So I've got myself an old pair of ES925, and these are going to sit in here. I've just cut little holes in the side there, and they are going to sit on there 
like so with the cable fed through I haven't fed the cable yet so don't get carried away so they will sit flush like so and uh, I'm just going to get them to sit flush and then actually the wing will sit on those as well and then push rod straight back to the elevator push rod straight back for the rod so little update um, I've just added those uh, little ES9251 stroke 2 servos sitting there really nicely um, anybody with OCD very sorry I've got the uh, numbers around the wrong way other thing I've added the rudder with a hinge and I've just added uh, some scrap from one of my old bolts of kits just along the bottom there just to give it a bit more because it looked like I could snap that off quite easily so Next thing I've got to do is just come up with some ideas for push rods, uh, wing attachment, and then I've got to think about, although this will have reflex, whether I should be reflexing these outer tips in some controlled way. What do you think? Well, there she is. One hybrid uh, June Freak, make it up as you go along, Klein Vogelman. <laughs> So the idea is, this is at the moment, this is based on the Wind Freak, uh, it's rudder, elevator, and at the moment this is just flat sheet of this uh, foam core type material. And then I've got, um, and this is the KFM2, which has got the uh, infills on the top as we discussed and we've also got uh, the exactly the same for the underneath to make it a KFM4 I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to attach these so I can take them off on and off I'm, I thought about magnets and then you know people start going hey, you put too much weight out on the tip so I'm thinking about pins literally if i just put pins in an angle it's not going to be well i don't predict it's going to be fast flying um the bands here are rolled in the center section in place so i can one pin at an angle there one pin at an angle there and then two pins at that angle i think will do it um if it doesn't then i'll just have to tape it but what i'd really like to do is take them on and off to experience the different flying but uh, anyway She's basically done. I've just got to cut a hole for the receiver. Okay, one last thing before we go to the field. The I was concerned about the reflex on the outer panels. And uh, so, I'll come up with a little bodge. Basically, if I show you, it's a control horn, which has got the sliding um, grub screw in it. So I can then actually just adjust the reflex, then lock it in place on both wings. Because it's experimental, I'm not really worried about the looks, but obviously I think it's going to be quite important. Uh, you know, I've only got a Facebook here, an nautical degree, so um, I'm going to need to work this out in the field. I'm sure there's clever people would be able to tell me, but um, anyway, that's what we're doing about the reflex for the outer tip. So she weighs in at 100 grams. Um, all I've got to do now is go to the field and let's see how a straight wing flying wing flies with rudder elevator and now we crack on with the uh, Jadelski KFM2 and KFM4 add-ons